Okay, for this question, we're going to find two positive numbers so that their product is 100, but their sum is going to be the minimum. So here we go. First of all, let's go ahead and put down what we know. We are looking for two numbers, and let's just say we have x and y, right? We're using variables. And product means multiply. So we know x times y will give us 100. And then the second line says, this is what we are going to know, right? We want the minimum of their sum. Well, that's just simply x plus y, and I will just call that to be s for the sum. And this is going to be x plus y. And now we just have to find the minimum of this function, but we have two unknowns, two variables. That's not good. Don't worry though, we can come back here and just divide the x on both sides. So we see this right here, y will be 100 over x. And we can put this right here. And that's very lovely, right? Now we see we have s equals x plus 100 over x like this. And now we have a function in terms of x. So I can call this to be s of x. And then let's go ahead and do our usual derivative, s prime of x. The derivative of x is just going to be 1. And if you look at the x as x to a negative 1 power like this, bring the negative to the front so we get negative, and the minus 1 to the power, which is x to a negative 2. Don't forget the 100 on the top. So we have 100 over x squared like this. And in fact, let me factor this a little bit. This is the difference of two squares. So I will go ahead and do 1 minus 10 over x times 1 plus 10 over x. And as usual, let's go ahead and set this to be 0 so we can find out our critical numbers. From here, as we can see, we need x to be 10. And from here, we can see that we need x to be negative 10. And in fact, we don't need to care about negative 10 because we're looking for two positive numbers, right? So this right here is actually out of our consideration. And now let's just do a number line test real quick. So I will just put this down right here. This is x and this is s prime, so which is the first derivative right here. Just focus on 10, right? And technically negative 10 is right here, but again, maybe I could put it down just to not let it feel left out. Anyway, I had to pick a number slightly less than 10. Let's say 9, put a 9 right here and right here. When we do 9 here, this is 1 minus 10 over 9, which is bigger than 1. 1 minus something bigger than 1. We get negative. And then that will give us positive. So in fact, this portion here is negative. And when we have a number bigger than 10, let's say 25 or something, that would be positive. That would be positive. So we have positive. So as you can see, when x is equal to 10, we actually get you know, the function going down and then go up. Therefore, this is a minimum, right? So this right here is what we are looking for. x has to be 10. How can we find y though? Just go back here. So, of course, y equals 100 over x, and that's 100 over 10, which is, of course, 10. So, I will just tell you guys right here, right? So, the answer is just going to be 10 and 10. And, of course, when you multiply 10 and 10, you get 100. When you add them up, you get 20. And if you look at, let's say, 20 times 5, this is going to be 100 as well. But if you do 20 plus 5, this is 25 which is not small than the sum of this, right? It's not smaller than that. By the way, this right here is it.